pray that I'll say something and touch somebody tonight. You know, this, when, when I started this, I had to say old me and old my a lot of times to myself. And that's one thing when you start getting a message together or me, you know, a lot of times I think, well, I'm short here, I'm short here, I'm short here. But uh, the title's going to be, I Can See Clear Now, Can You? And if you would, you can turn to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. I just pray, Lord God, you'll reach down and anoint me tonight, Lord God, to bring this forth the way that you've showed it to me, Lord. And I thank you and praise you for that. Pray, Lord, that we'll touch somebody here tonight, touch somebody on the Internet tonight, Lord God. We give you the praise and the glory for that, Jesus. It's in your precious name we pray, Lord, as we go into this worship service tonight. Amen. You know, in, in, starting in Corinthians, the God of, of this world is Christ. But, the God of the world that blinds us, that's a small G-O-D. You know, he, he blinds us. Not Our God don't blind us. The, the, the devil himself portrays himself as God to blind his, the children in this world, and it's, it's unbelievable how much is happening. People are deceived by this God. You know, they're deceived with TV, pleasures of life, tomorrow. You know, and a lot of times tomorrow never comes. And there's too many false religions out there, too many young people, they don't have a clue what to do. I mean, they're led astray, and they don't, they don't have no idea which way to go if we don't show them. We need to show them the gospel of Christ. We need to be the light to bring, out of, bring them out of darkness. You know, the world's not going to show them anything good. All they're going to show them sin, sin, and worse sin. It's our place to lead them to Jesus. You know, if we fall short, it's us. You know, it's, it's our responsibility to lead this next generation. Because you can see it coming. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about our church. You t look, go to any church you go to. Me and Gail visited one the other night. There's no young people in church no more. It's people our age. All right, when we're gone, what's going to happen? If we don't lead them and turn them around, you know, the, the church will go away as such, you know, because they, they're not going to know what to do. They, they won't have a clue if we don't lead them that way. You know, I had eye surgery, and now I see a totally different picture with my eyes. You know, I thought I could see before, but now I see things brighter, clearer, and this is the same thing that should happen to people when they get saved. They should see brighter, they should see clearer, you know, don't look back at what you left behind. Look at what's ahead that you see those things. The things of this world look dimmer once you're saved. You know, I don't have the desires of my heart like I did at once. You know, used to I couldn't stay off a golf course, couldn't stay out of a racetrack. Now it don't bother me. You know, I'm getting older, but I'm getting more and more years trying to serve the Lord, trying to do better. Have I arrived? No, I have not arrived. I still got a ways to go, you know. I don't. I don't think you're going to arrive to uh, you leave here in, in heaven, and then you can say I've arrived, because it's a battle that you're fighting all the time down here. We should see things that make us brighter, like more reading of God's word. Oh me, more singing. Oh me, more witnessing. Oh me, more testifying. Oh me. We should do more of these things to keep a brighter light and a vision to see Jesus one day. Don't think you can do all this at once. But a day without these steps, you can start a downfall. If you're not careful, then you'll just keep spiraling down, 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 down. 
You know, my eyes got bad over a period of time. They didn't just get bad like that. And we can fall over a period of time. Each and every one of us, you know, God, he can keep his hand on us where we won't fall. But if, if we disobey him and not listen to him and do his word, then we can start to spiral downfall over a period of time. And if we don't watch out, we'll let slate Satan slip into our lives. And once he slips into your life, you're gonna, if you're not careful, you're going to go his way. Because you know, he's going to start persuading you with things like, look at this, look what they got, look what they got, look what you could have, look what you could have. But we don't need to do that. We need to stay closer to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your God which is in heaven. We need to show our works. You know, we don't need to hide them under a bushel. We need to show them, you know, that, that God is real, that God is the light of this world. You know, if we don't, who, who, who's going to do it if we don't? We need to light our, let our light shine more. And, you know, most of these things, I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. And if it... You know, if it fits you, fine, but I'm, I'm talking to me. I need to let my light shine more. There's too many times and too many opportunities I've had to do stuff that I haven't. You know, sometimes confession's good, but, I mean, you know, I can look back and tell times I could have done a whole lot more and had a whole lot of opportunities that I let slide by. Sometimes when these opportunities slide by, they never come again. You know, sometimes you just get one opportunity. Sometimes you might get two opportunities. Sometimes you might get three. But when you, that opportunity comes, you need to, need to show it. If we don't do as the Bible tells us, we fall short in glorifying our Father in heaven. We have to do what this Word says do. You know, we don't need to do what man says do. We don't need to do what doctors say do, what lawyers say do, we need to do what the Word of God says to do. If we do that, we all get closer and stronger before Him. And you know, that's what I want to do. You know, He's not pleased with us when we're not doing our part to save the lost. He's, he's not happy at all with us. You know, I, I think, you know, you know, He, he couldn't be happy with me if, if I'm around a sinner and and don't try to witness to him some way. He's not happy with me. And I don't think he's happy with any of us. You know, if, if we've got the opportunity to, to say, you don't have to beat them over the head and beat them with a stick. But, you know, you can say a word. It don't have to be no long, drawn-out sermon. You can say one word that could turn somebody's life around that you may not even know about at this time. You know, it might be down the road. It might be weeks, might be months, might be years. But when that word's instilled in your mind, you'll remember it. You know, that's, you know, I had been in church before when y'all started praying for me here. Down deep, I knowed what I was supposed to do. I knowed I should be in the house of God. I should be in here worshiping the Lord. But I took that downward spiral where I fell to the world, and I was listening to the world more so than I was God. Because if I'd been listening to God, I'd been back in the house of God with Gail and, and the children a whole lot quicker. But he was merciful to me that he'd give me the one chance, like I told her, one chance. And probably if I hadn't, I, I, don't, I really probably would not have had another chance. I think that was my chance right there. You know, get it right, boy, or it's over. And, and that's, that's what we all do if we're not careful. We don't want to let the devil trap us into stuff. Because it's, it's easy to fall in a trap. I mean, it, it's easy. You got, to, you got to read the Word. You got to stay on top of things. I mean, it's, it's, um, you don't have to fall in a trap. But it's very easy if you're not doing what you're supposed to do on your end to try to glorify God and try to stay closer to God. If you don't, you can fall in that trap. In this dying world, that's what's happening now. A lot of people are falling in that trap. 
to fall in that trap. And it's our job to go bring them out of this trap. You know, we, it, that's, that's what we're called to do, to witness and testify to this lost and dying world. And as myself, I need to do a whole lot better. I mean, I need to do a whole lot better. And it, uh, you know, it, it's shameful that sometimes you gotta go through something and you start studying the Word to open your own eyes. You know, I, I wasn't saying open everybody else's eyes. You know, when I was doing this, I was thinking, open my eyes, Lord, open my eyes. Because, you know, nobody knows you better than yourself. I mean, they don't know. I, I know Donnie is a good man, but that's all I know. Donnie probably vice versa. He thinks maybe I'm a good man, but that's all I know. You know, we don't know what we do when we're away from here. And, and you know, you just, if you're not careful, you fall into them traps. And that's what I did. I fell in trap, backslid, and I was out of church probably five or six years. And I'm not proud of it. If you go to John chapter 9, verse 1 through 7, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man, a man which was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest, made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am the light of the world, I am the light of the world. You know, it don't get much simpler than that. You know, he's, he is the light of the world. This man was spiritually blind from birth. I think we're all spiritually blind from birth. We all have to get saved. We're not born saved. I mean, if you're a child and something happens, I know you go to heaven. I ain't that far out where I can't, you know, I, I, I understand that. But I think we're all born blind, a spiritual blindness to this world. This man had a fierce physical need to open his eyes, and Jesus opened them. And our times are growing short. We need to open the spiritual eyes of the people of this world before it's too late. That's our job to go out and try to open these spiritual eyes, you know, to get them saved. I must do the work. Yes, I must do the work. Jesus is the light of the world, and we need to show it. Do we show it? Do I show it? Not all the time. You know, I, I'm not. Now I'm not saying I'm out here cussing and beard joint. And all. I'm not saying that. You know, I try my best to live, but I still see where I fall short. That I that I need to show this world what type of person I am. Are people dying lost every day? Every day. Is there someone we could witness to, but we were too busy? You know, that's the thing with me and a lot of people, and I'm not singling all of y'all out, but it seems like this is the type of the world now, everybody's too busy. And I, you know, I've caught myself, and Gail can say amen to this. I say, not enough hours in the day. Well, it's 24 hours in the day since the beginning of the time, and there'll be 24 hours in the day till the end of time. So, you know, that's just an excuse that I use for myself, and I'm too busy. Jesus was never too busy, He was always there. He was right on time. We can't reach them all, but we can reach more than we're reaching. If we reached more than we was reaching, there would be more people in this church tonight than what's here. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming down on our church. It's 
every church. I mean, you go to a church that's got any amount of congregation at all, they're most likely not preaching the pure word of God. You know, you go by some of these places and the parking lot slap full, but all you got to do is be there when you watch them when they come out. And, you know, according to what I read in God's word, you ought not be going in church and coming out of church the way some of them look. And I'm not clotheslining either. I'm just saying what I see. And, you know, if we see it, God sees it. And I look at, at myself, I know I fall short. There's a number of times I have fell short. You know, maybe the Lord let my eyes get dim to see and to open my eyes. Because I'd never give this no thought till I worked on this. Gail had to work Monday, and I just got in there, and me and the Bible and the Word, and, you know, Lord, you got to help me get through this. But like I said, every time I'd say something, it'd be like, oh, me. You know, it's just like I was preaching to myself. But, you know, sometimes we might need to preach to ourselves. You know, not all the time, but I'm, and, and I'm just using me as an example because I, you know, I, I know we've got a great pastor. I mean, one of the best pastors in Gastonia. He preaches the word every time he's in here. I mean, you don't have, you you can open the Bible and look, but when he preaches, you can guarantee it's in black and white or red letter if Jesus said it in the Bible. He don't take away and he don't add. And you know, I would like to get in my life strong enough where I didn't take away, didn't add. I, you know, I don't think I'm taking away or adding to the to the Bible as such. But I'd like to get strong enough where I'd know. I'm absolutely right, or this is absolutely wrong. There's no middle road. There's no middle road. You're either right or you're wrong. And, you know, I, I just don't want wrongs to mount up and, and drag me down. You know, 72 years old, I've come too far now to turn around and look back. You know, it don't take no rocket science just to tell you I haven't got as long left as I've done being here. And you don't want to live this long and then lose it all in the end. And I don't. You know, I, I just, I love the Lord. I appreciate the Lord. But I know I need to do more for the Lord. I mean, I don't think any of us can do too much. There's, there's no way possible we could do too much. But you think of all the things he has done for us, all the things he's done for me. You know, healing your body when you're sick, taking care of finances. You know, I've never been hungry a day in my life in 72 years. I can't ever recall a time when I was a kid to now that I didn't have something to eat. I've not been what I wanted to eat, but I had something to eat. And, and you know, that's just that's the way that our God is. He supplies your needs. He might not supply your wants, but he'll supply your needs. And he's always been there for me. He's healed me every time I've been sick. He's healed my family every time they've been sick. He protected Raven last week when he was in the wreck. You know, what? That nobody in the world would do that. They could care less. But he sees everything that goes on. Every sparrow that falls, he knows about it. Every downfall we do, you know, I'm sure he looks down, you know, not now, son, turn around. And everything good we do, he knows it. I mean, he know, he don't miss nothing. Whether we're asleep or awake, he knows what's going on with us. You know, if we're asleep and the enemy's outside, I thoroughly believe he could send angels down to save on down the road, boys, not here. You know, he can protect you. He is a protector. He is a provider. There's, there's just nothing too big for our God that he can't do. 
and we need to get in the same boat that nothing's too big to our God that we can't do for him to glorify him to uplift him to make our light shine more toward him we get to doing that this lost world you you can see them start getting saved and start coming in but until we do that they, they, they've got nothing to look forward to I mean you know some t- if you don't teach them the word the world will offer them more than the church offer I mean it shouldn't be that way but the world will say look here let's line this stuff up you know just all the way down through here, the world can line it up the church once you get them in here and get them saved then you can say look what you got lined up but when they lost they don't look at what they got lined up all they're looking at can I better myself will this help me will it hurt him and help me it don't matter if it helps me I don't care if it hurts him but when you get saved and in church you care if what you say or what you do hurts you hurts you hurts me you know you don't want to hurt anybody once once you get saved and know the way to go and the things to do you want to do everything to glorify him and and everybody will love everybody you know I think this church is a loving church can we be more loving probably because there's you know you never I don't think like I said you never reach your potential till you get to heaven as long as you're down here it's always a work you're working just like a ladder you're going up a step going up a step going up a step but you're never going to get to the top till you get to heaven don't matter if that ladder's 5,000 runs you get to the top of it there's still something you can do for God and there's something I can do for God but just don't start going back down that ladder when you start going back down that ladder then the devil's looking up and he's like here he comes here he comes here he comes and if you ain't careful, there you are. So I hope I haven't hurt anybody's feelings. I love each and every one of you. But I just hope that you can see a clearer vision like I have now. You know, that it, it's opened my eyes what I need to do that I wouldn't do. I love all of you. I love all of you on the Internet. You know, I try to love everybody. Some, some people hard to love, but you go on. You know, it ain't no, ain't no use to kick them when they're down, I guess. And I, they have been times in my life when, you know, they down, let them stay down. They done it. Leave them alone. Kick them. You know, cover them up. It ain't no good to nobody. But everybody is good. The Lord don't look at us as higher, higher, higher. He looks all of us as lost souls until we're saved. And then once we're saved, you know, all of us are supposed to glorify Him and uplift Him. Altars open if anybody wants to pray and have Sister Betty come back to you.